space. Yeah, no, that's actually, that's based on that's based on the old television show Lost in Space from the sixties. So. All right. Well, ladies, welcome back to the table. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream. Well, this is session two of Iron Maidens, the science fantasy space opera game with an all female cast and using the D&D fifth edition rule set, however, tweaked out a little bit to make it a little bit more sci fi ish. We have. A very strange stream going on today. I keep going up and down and up and down <laughs> as people load or do whatever else on the table. So last episode, let me do a recap real quick. Last episode, we had the ladies aboard the Livingston. The Livingston is a prison transport ship piloted by Lox, the Vulpine Xenomorph. Um, her, one of her guards is Miss Ares, who is a soldier of fortune, a soldier for hire, a mercenary, and a passenger in Pixis, an alien, uh, anthropomorphic android that, uh, was on her way to where the other three were going, which is to a prison called the Iron Star Station, which is a prison station. On their way, they got caught in the middle of a, a space battle. They were boarded, and they had to repel borders of some alien and terrible nature. We discovered at that point that that uh, Pale is, or I'm sorry, Ares is uh, a kind of a, a face roller <laughs> and uh, uh, likes to use her chainsaw in, in close combat and likes to knock people down a lot. Yeah. So that was nice. Um, but eventually they got the living stin going and they made the FTL jump and they landed somewhere else. And that is where we will be starting up here in about two minutes as Miss Susie Q, of course, waits until now to go fill her coffee cup. <laughs> I just did that, too. But I'm not going to complain too much because she grabbed my coffee cup on the way and she's filling mine as well. So, ladies, before we get started, I would like to say that one of your fans out there, I'm not going to name his name, but one of your fans out there sent me some really cool information today about uh, a new technology. And it was so cool, in fact, that I decided to create a new item to replace, quote unquote, healing potions or stim drugs or any of the rest of that stuff. And we have a new item that will be a medical item that will uh, you'll be able to find amongst your travels. It is called Betty Gel. It's basically, it's a healing potion that you rub on your skin. Okay. Interesting. Yes, it's very, very cool stuff. I like it a lot. So I would like to thank this person is already out there in uh, the stream, so he knows who he is, and I would like to thank him very much. Thanks, fan. Exactly. Thank you, fans. <laughs> and if any of the rest of you fans have anything that you would like to offer constructively, mind you, constructively, because some of the uh, unconstructive comments from last session got uh, a few accounts uh, on Twitch banned. So uh, if you have anything constructive you would like to uh, offer to the ladies uh, for this sci-fi game, by all means, please message me over on Discord. And we will see what we can do to add extra stuff in. All right, Lox, are you finally set? Yes, yes, I am. Are you are you sitting down now? Mostly. Okay. So you have exited FTL, and you have landed somewhere in space with unfamiliar stars around you. Within seconds of coming out of FTL, suddenly the alarms start blaring all over the Livingston. 
and the holographic image flickers and pops up and it's kind of flickering and popping as it sits there and or I should say stands there and says that there are a number of systems that are down. What would you ladies like to do? I'm going to run a diagnostic, see what sys what systems are down and what systems we can kind of reroute and get power back to. That would be a computer's check. It's a decent roll. Um, you know that sensors are mostly down. Long range sensors are totally down. Uh, life support is beginning to fail in parts of the ship. Uh, propulsion is operable, but at 50%. FTL is offline, it is burned out. Uh, external weapons are offline. Shielding offline and otherwise there is a number of minor systems that are going down. All right, ladies, we are quacking. So to speak, the ship is sinking, correct? No, we are sitting ducks. Does Life support is failing we have no we have virtually no sensors no propulsion no ftl yeah no shields no weapons we're quacking do we have uh stuff to fix it well at the very least we should make sure that our life support stays online in crucial areas even if we have to take it down in others yeah right now my main my main concern is going to be propulsion even if we're moving slow as slow can be and life support, just so we can get, find at least maybe a repair dock out here. Hmm. Uh, she looks out the window. I guess, guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I know. All right, I'm going to start rerouting power to propulsion and life support and see if we can get those stable. Um, Ares will disappear and check for physical damage of the ship and maybe any heavy lifting to straighten things up or patch it up. Yeah, okay. anything you guys can do to help will be greatly appreciated. Um, if you want to point me at equipment, because I've never been on the ship before, I will be happy to help. Um, check engine bay. Um, take Ares with you, because she's got the she's got the other key card. She can probably help you. Um, double check uh, propulsion. There might be something down there that can help, and, and um, weapons bay. There might be something in there. All right, Aries, let's go. All right, follow me. I have shared the map with you ladies again. I have unlocked your tokens. Now, according to the computer readout and according to Livingston himself, Engines number one, three, and four are down. You're only kind of working overtime on engine two at the moment. How does one fix these by chance? Do we possibly have something to patch it up for now? Well, you may want to go to the engine compartments to find that out yourselves. All right. Um, is so that where we're is one on top? One is... Like over here. Yep, right up there where you're moving. Echo's going to go with Ares and Raviella and then okay. look over at Pixis and recommend that she stays here with locks to help out.
I swipe my key card. Alrighty. Let me start opening up areas of the map for you. And by the way, ladies, this is not going to be the final map of the Livingston. The Livingston is currently under repairs <laughs> as far as mapping goes as well. So it's under repair in more than just one way. Okay, so you swipe the card. The door opens up, and this entire area is one big engine. This whole big gray blob. That okay. whole big gray blob right there is one big engine. Nice. Yes, which is one of the things that's going to be changing in the <laughs> in the updated map is you'll actually get to see what your engine looks like. So I think I'd be looking for like diagrams and stuff and tools. OK, um, there is a tool locker nearby. It is over to the right side as you enter the room. There is a number of computer bays in front of you uh, that have various screens that have different things flashing red on them right now. I would like to investigate red flashy things. All right. Well, investigation check would be a great idea. Um, are you trained in computer use? I am not. Okay, then you'll be rolling this straight up as an investigation check. Can I offer her assistance or anything? Uh, she's already here. Do you have computers? No, but I have investigation as a proficiency. Well, nope. Yeah, the, the key here is computers more than investigation. So um, with that investigation, you know how to research. You understand some idea of what the computer is going to spit back at you. Uh, you do find that this specific engine has been hit externally. So in order for this one to be repaired, it would need to be repaired externally. Somebody's going to have to go outside. Well, uh, spacewalking's not my specialty, so I'm going to ask the ladies if any of them are up to that. Um. I did it in a module once, a visual program, not real actual spacewalking. Echo's going to look down at her whole tail length and kind of shake her head and say they probably have nothing that would fit me. There's, I highly doubt that there's a spacesuit that would be suitable for me to go out there in. So we should... Sorry probably check three and four and see if we can fix them and uh, look at life support before we uh, decide to go out on this one then. Sounds like a plan. I don't mind going out in this spacesuit. As a note, ladies, to 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 update anybody's lexicon of of knowledge, a spacesuit is called an EVA suit. Well, considering Aries isn't very bright, we'll just, she'll just continue to probably call it that. That's fine. No, that's very very fine. I have no issue with that. But I was just letting you know so that way when you run across something that says EVA suits, you'll know exactly what you're looking at. That's probably got like, like an E suit. Okay, this is engine two that is over here. It is working absolutely fine. But as you open the door, you do see that there is a little yellow flashy light. That light is flashing. You see it? Odd. Probably shouldn't be flashing yellow. Probably not. We should probably take a look at that. Uh, investigation? Yes, investigation again. Somebody else no had idea. better open their eyes because I can't see a thing. 
Can I take a look at it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you will figure out that the little yellow flashy light is the fact that it's the fuel indicator. The fuel indicator is saying that because this one is working overtime, it's definitely going to be uh, running out of gas soon. I hope there's some more fuel somewhere on this ship. Maybe we can get some from one of the other engines. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, if we could pull some from one of the other engines. That's going to be... <laughs> Susie's over here panting with this look of horror on her face. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you're going to have to uh, have some pretty fancy schmancy engineering in order to do that. Yeah, but one isn't even working now, so... Hey, I've seen those movies, you know, where they stick a tube in there and they suck out through the... It could be like that, right? Yeah, sure. Yep. <laughs> you, go ahead. you go ahead and siphon the uh, radioactive elements and... <laughs> and this is how was... Ares looks like Darth Vader on her suit. Funny, because <laughs> I was envisioning more Star Trek style where we cl crawl through the vents and get down there and, uh, you know, just take a chunk off and move it. It could be like that as well. It could be kind of a combination of Firefly and Star Trek. <laughs> Where's Kaylee? I need Kaylee. Well, I gave everybody the opportunity of making an engineer, and nobody wanted one. Damn it. I need Kaylee. <laughs> anyway, so meanwhile, up in the cockpit, we have... Oh, who's up there? We have Lunafia, we have Lox, and we have Pixis up in the cockpit. What are the three of you going to do? Oh, I just have a question. Do we have like a walkie-talkie system? Are we able to communicate with them while they're walking over there? You do indeed have communication systems. All of you have comms on you. Um, think of them like little earwigs. You have, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a piece that goes in your ear, goes out and around behind your ear, and then connects to the side of your neck. So when you touch it on your side of your neck, it's called a sublingual translator. It, you can basically whisper and somebody else can hear you through their little earpiece. It's snazzy. Oh, we're screwed. Yeah, um, Ares gets over there. Looks like this is, I forget, um, is this Engine 2, basically? Engine 2 is the one that you are currently in, yes. Okay. Engine 2 is low on fuel. Oh, crap crackers. She'll continue down to the other ones and check them out. All right, Pixis, uh, Lunafia, are either of you good with computers? I have, I some have no computer skills whatsoever. I have some pretty good navigation. Maybe I could help us try and find a planet to land on. Sounds like a plan. Find a civilization. I'm going to try and reroute some fuel and life support. Okay, so Pixis, you can go ahead and roll me a navigation check. Uh, you'll be doing so at disadvantage. So... I wouldn't bother. <laughs> well, re-roll that, but click the disadvantage button. You might get higher. Yeah, that might benefit me. <laughs> it may actually benefit you to roll at disadvantage right now. Um, Lox, you can go ahead and roll me a computer check to see if you can start rerouting certain things. <laughs> Believe it or not, your disadvantage actually worked out in your favor. You do indeed <laughs> utilize the really shitty sensors that you have right now, and you're able to kind of aim the dish just right, and you've picked up radio signals, which 
low frequency radio signals is kind of a, hey, that's kind of a weird thing to find in space. But you do find an area about one light year away. So one astronomical unit away. Oh. Yes, at your current speed, it's going to take you roughly 300 years to get there. But oh my God. You, do find, <laughs> you do find a place. So basically, we need to fix our engines and then go there. <laughs> At least we have a connection right. now. Okay, Locks, you start working on the computer system, trying to get uh, the life support to be stabilized. During that time period, you find out that there is a breach in the hull somewhere, and you're venting atmosphere. You're venting Atmo somewhere. Is there anybody who can go on an EVA? What is EVA? You got to go outside the ship. I'm venting atmosphere somewhere. Oh, a suit thing. Oh, oh. Uh, suppose I could do that. I did it in training module once. I go and find one of these suits. Okay. That one zip me in the back. <laughs> you should leave us the key then so we can get in the um, engine rooms. As okay. long as you let me back in. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You do have three villainesses on the ship. So. We're not villainesses. I and got framed. I'm not bad. Hey, I'm just as bad in, in her own eyes. I'm just misunderstood. <laughs> You're I'm not spot. bad. I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, but you get to engine three, ladies. The door will not open. There is a big red light that goes eh, eh, every time Ares goes to swipe her card. And then it goes eh, eh, every single time. Um, will there be a, a good reason for this? Maybe like there's a warning air seal on the other side or something? I'm going to bet that's where the, the, the breach is. Yeah, just pe is there a window pe to peek through? There is a window, but it's all frosted. Then that room is cold as ass, and there's a breach in there. That's the breach! Yeah, Yeah. let's not even touch this door. Oh, you don't want me to smash it open? Please, preferably not. As much as I would love to get sucked into space today, <laughs> uh, no. Alright. Um... Ladies, you can go ahead. All of six of you can go ahead and roll me an intelligence check. Ha ha ha! Yay! That's what I'm great at. <laughs> Echo's like, I got this. My negative one. Hey, that was a good oh. one, Larry's. <laughs> That's funny. I love rolling good on really bad things. Right? You're like, I have a negative modifier on this. Oh, what? Nat 20? <laughs> <laughs> Pixis, uh, your intelligence is on your main tab of your character sheet. There you go. There you go. All right. So basically everybody but Lunafia, who obviously has no idea about anything when it comes about being in space. She is, she is very terrestrial. She is not a space person. You've all know that the bulkhead door that is closed for this specific uh, engine compartment is meant to withstand a reactor breach. So this is not where you're venting atmosphere. Okay. Hmm. All right, Aries, you're going to have to do that EVA. All right. When you get outside the ship, look for it's gonna look like smoke coming out from somewhere. Look like smoke. Okay, got it. I think you um, should start over there by engine one because we know it's got a hole. Right. Um, I go and find this EVA thing and um and uh find the right door for engine one. To get outside. Don't forget to engage the magnetic boots. You're gonna want those. Aww, you had a reminder. 
<laughs> I got a C plus in that class. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, uh, the best locations that you could probably find a EVA suit would be in one of the two cargo bays or in one of the two shuttles. Okay. Um, which one's closest? Cargo um, bay was toward the back, right? Yep, cargo bays and the shuttles are both in the back. All right, since she's already basically right there. All right, so you walk into this cargo bay. There are lockers. There are some uh, EVA suits, so you are free to go ahead and put one on. It'll take you some time to put one on. Can somebody help me zip up? I'll, I'll just I'll, de I'll look out and I like, wave somebody over. I'll come help. <laughs> <laughs> just drops trow and just gets in it like nothing. <laughs> While these two are dressing, um, can Echo look around and see if there's anything else that we might be able to use? There is a number of basic supplies, food, water. Um, there's no weaponry available here. There's another two suits in here. So there's a total of three suits in this uh, cargo container or this, uh, this cargo bay. Um, but for the most part, this is all like resupply kind of stuff. Hmm. I'm going to put a hand on my comms and uh, say, Locks, do we have any sort of basically a escape pod or emergency shuttle or anything? Um, should I start moving supplies into there just in case? We have two shuttles at the um st uh stern of the ship you yeah it'd probably be a good idea to start moving some supplies in there just in case if we have to bug out so that's what i'd like to be doing while they're getting while Ravel is helping dress aries <laughs> okay <laughs> so i'd like to start moving some supplies into there all right so you're gonna start moving supplies you go ahead and pick a shuttle and tell me what you want to do. Where, I'm assuming uh, you're taking Ares' uh, card from her? Oh, yeah, I guess I probably should. Ares, can I borrow your card? I suppose so. Just don't let me get in trouble. Well, you just let me know when you're ready to start walking, and I'll come back and help. I like that. Don't let me get in trouble. I think you guys are already in enough trouble. Uh, you are stuck in a region of space that none of you knows, and your ship is disabled, and you don't know if you're surrounded by hostiles or not. Well, Lux Hello. is the boss lady. She doesn't want to get like in trouble with her. Oh. <laughs> protocol. Echo, lure, load the starboard side first. All right, so Echo's going to start working on that then. Okay. You start hauling supplies to the starboard side. Meanwhile, well, Raviella, you may want to leave this room because the only way to get outside, and Aries, this is uh, also for you, only way to get outside is that big double door that you see <laughs> at the uh, the bottom of the room. Okay. That is. Uh, the only way out. Oh, all the way back there? All okay. the way back there. <laughs> she runs back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Oh. Right there. I just okay. popped you down to it. I see it. But meanwhile, Echo, you swipe the card for the door for the space shuttle. The, the shuttle opens partway, about two feet up off the ground. And suddenly you start getting very, very cold around your snake portion of your body as you feel air rushing past you to go into the shuttle. Matter of fact, you need to make me a strength check. I'll give you advantage. 
I had to check the door, didn't I? You did indeed. And you also failed. You're being dragged under the door by, or I should say you're being pushed under the door from the pressure of the ship, pushing you into the, the uh, shuttle. Yeah, Echo's going to start screaming at the top of her lungs for somebody to get their ass over here. Preferably uh, quickly, please. I, I think I'm in <laughs> range, so that's exactly what I'll do. Okay, you get over here. I would like you to also roll me with with advantage, uh, a strength check. You're perfectly fine. You grab a hold of her and you start hauling her up and around the corner. And and can I and find I a button to close the door? Yes, actually you can. Do you want to go ahead and try to slap the door while you're pulling her away? Yes, I do. All right. You go ahead, you slap the button on the door. It goes down, but does not close all the way. It's about six inches above the ground where it stops. It's stuck. Well, six inches, we're probably not going to fall through as quickly then. No, but the air rushing out of your ship and out the busted ass uh, shuttle most definitely will be uh, a problem. Meanwhile, up in the cockpit, you hear the fact that a new alarm starts ringing, that there is a sudden decompression in the aft section of the ship. What the? What the hell happened? Echo, what happened? There's a breach or something over here. I don't know. What side? The starboard. I just have to say this. I have to say this out loud. Normally, I don't call out uh, followers while we are playing a game. But this one's perfect. Thank you very much for the follow. Vacuum system. <laughs> oh, awesome. Welcome vacuum system. <laughs> nice. Is the computer telling me what side it's on? It's on the port side. Wrong side, wrong side. You're on port side. I thought starboard was the right. Starboard is the right. Port it's is left. Regardless, we need to plug the hole. Yeah, we need to plug that hole. Crap. Okay, yep, let's get this hole plugged. I can hear Madison in the background laughing her ass off. Alrighty, so <laughs> how exactly do you want to do this? Lunofia Pixis and Locks. What are the three of you going to do up there in the cockpit? And Madison, stop laughing every time I say cockpit. <laughs> you say it like she's the only one giggling. <laughs> Go into the cargo bay. See if you can find a piece of metal big enough to fit over the over the the breach in that door. All right, let's do it, Raviella. Also, thank you very much for not letting me get sucked out. No problem. Should probably not use the one we were just in. Aries is going out that door. I think there's one over here, though. Yes, matter of fact, the, as you say that, you watch the light go from green to red outside that door. As it is now full, it has gone through its decompression cycle. Should I run back there and turn into a space slug and sit in front of it for now? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she turns in the job of the hut and just kind of sits there in front of it. She's like, yeah, I got this. Sexy. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get the three of you girls into doing something. Going through my computers again, see if I can override that door and maybe get it to slam shut while they're looking for a piece of metal. Okay, well, we are going to leave the girls in the aft section alone for a few minutes while we work with the women in the in the fore section. 
I said four section. <laughs> Dirty minded ladies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who us no. <laughs> anyway. So what would you three up front would like to do? Up in the piloting compartment like to do. I don't know where I can be of much help. I don't have computer skills or investigation skills. What would you like me to do, Ox? Head back, see if you can help them. Um, anything to plug the to plug as many holes as we can in this <laughs> in this bad boy. Alrighty. Well, I got my suggestion. <laughs> yes, yes, you have your suggestion. And yes, chat, Pixis is an android. She is a morphic android. So think of uh, the T-1000 from uh, Terminator 2, that liquid metal kind of thing, except she can only turn into other humanoid-esque type creatures. Lunafia, as you're walking down the hallway, your passive perception is good enough. As you're walking down the hallway, you can hear something in the room to your right, so above you, to the to the upside of the map. Okie dokie. Can I check the door to make sure there's no locks or anything on it? There is locks on it, but it's a simple lock. You you you've you've gotten through locks worse than this before. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to unlock it then. Okay. Well, give me a quick perception check first before you go ahead and try doing anything else. Oh, that's an easy perception check for you. You notice that the little readout as it scrolls past really quickly, that this is Cryo Bay 3. We got more weirdos on this ship with us? Not that I know of, just the ones that I unfroze. I shouldn't have any other transport. Ha ha. What? Nobody's weirder than you guys. <laughs> All right. You can go ahead and roll me an intelligence check at advantage to open this door. Oh, yeah. Very good. You're able to figure it out relatively quickly. It's a standard security protocol that most of the uh, law enforcement uses. Hey, nobody said we were original. No, no. One, two, three, four is not a secure password. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't need to be secure if you shoot them before they get to it. Exactly. Exactly. In here, you see six cryopods. You can hear a strange hissing noise in here. That's not echo. The cryopods are lit up. Maybe lock that door for now, <laughs> if you can. I'm going to ready my pistol and slowly walk in. Okay. It's definitely cold in here. It's foggy as the as the vapors from the cryo chambers, which are all open. All six of them are open. The lights are on, but nobody's home. And this fog is kind of like rolling up out of the cryo 
and like along the ground, like a ground fog. You can feel your feet, you know, making hollow tapping sounds across the grates that are in the floor. The the under lighting under the floor kind of gives a weird bluish luminescence to the ground fog. Can I try clearing some of the fog by flapping my wings? You could attempt that. That'd be fine. You unfurl your wings and start, you know, stretching a little bit. This is the first opportunity you've had since being in cryo yourself for you to kind of stretch your wings. You start flapping your wings and it makes little eddies of of clouds around you. You can see the ground in your immediate area. You see the fact that you're just standing on a typical grate. Roll me a perception check. Uh oh. You think you see something as one of the blue lights winks out and back on quickly, as if something passed in front of it. I'm going to use my comm system to see if anyone's available to come into this creepy ass room with me. Apparently, there's no response. Raphael and I are a little busy back here. I am going into space. Speaking of which, let's go over to her. Oh. So, Aries. Yes. You're getting ready to step off into space. Yeah. The large good. doors in front of you open up, and there is nothing out there except for a distant star field. Um, she first peeks her face out cautiously. You look outside, and you don't see anything immediately nearby. It's pretty dark out there. Oh, yes. Um, magnetic boots. Yeah, she turns those on and talks to herself. Okay. Are you going to talk to yourself, or are you going to uh, speak through the comms? Are you leaving an open comm system? <laughs> um, um, you know, I'll leave it on, and everyone can hear her talking to herself. First step. Second step. She uh, <laughs> goes... Um, on the top of the aircraft. <laughs> Spaceship. Spaceship. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So step by step, you start inching your way out there. In the atypical television and movie slow motion sci-fi EVA walk. Just love it. Meanwhile, we'll go to Pixis next. Pixis. What would you like to do? You said you wanted to go back there, turn into a slug, and uh, kind of park your butt in front of the uh, <laughs> the gap in the door. Do you really want to do something like that? Or I was thinking that, but no, I probably um, would go join over here to um, Lunafia and see what's going on in the creepy room. All right. Okay, so you go over there, and you will join her. You can go ahead and move your token. Locks, what are you going to be doing? Still working on life support and stabilizing my ship. Give me another computer roll. It's a decent computer roll. You're you're getting there. You're getting there. You're making some headway. You're you're climbing through some spaghetti code right now, and uh, you're, you're making some headway. Okay, we will go. With Echo and Rafaela, you are standing in front of the door. What would you like to do? Any windows or anything on this door? There is. There is a. There is a small window. Do I see the, the so frostiness see. of the other rooms here? No, you do not. You got the key. Yeah, Echo is gonna reach over and swipe the key card. The door opens. 
Yes, I know. I don't have my sound effect machine on. The reason I don't have the sound effect machine on is because I'm trying to find a decent one that doesn't like kill my system and kill everything. So I'm looking for something I think we'd be able to block the hole. All right, there is a lot of stuff in here. Um, some of it you recognize as additional supplies. Some of it you recognize as possibly medical instruments uh, for the prison, which is no longer in existence because the Iron Star was blowed up. And there's other random crates of, as far as you two are concerned, space junk. If we have to, let's just push the crates in front of it. It may not be a perfect seal, but if we can stop it until we can get a better seal on. Yes, let's do that. So do we need to push together? Are they that big? Is there equipment for moving it around? They are. There is some equipment for moving around. Very good. You do see a, a, a hover jack to uh, help you move some of the stuff around. What kind of skill would I need to run that? You don't. It's, it's an easy on off button and you put it underneath the object and just lift it up. It'll take a couple of minutes to figure out, you know, oh, okay, I got to push this button to make things go up, this button to make things go down, you know, that kind of stuff. If anybody's ever used a pallet jack, it's the same thing, except yep. for instead of wheels, it has, a, you know, electromagnetic hovers underneath it. So it's not a difficult thing to use. All right, well, I'll push buttons till I can figure it out then. All righty. So the two of you will be doing that. Ares, meanwhile, you're climbing along the hull of the ship. You can see many locations where there is all sorts of bad things that have happened to the ship. You see a hull breach in... Remember where you guys were fighting in the center of the ship? Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to detail account of everything I see over the income. Okay. Well, you see a hull breach there that is venting a little bit. You see the fact that <laughs> engine three, which is the one that you guys tried to get into, but you couldn't, that one appears to have an entire, like, half a ship kind of parked nose first into it. Oh, nice. like crashed into yeah. it? Yep, crashed into it, uh, which probably happened during FTL when you guys ripped away from the other ships that had boarded you. Uh, the engine four doesn't seem to have any external damage. Engine one, you can see venting from over there. And you see some more venting from... Right over there. Okay. That's where our leak is at, these these locations? Uh, the two blue circles are the ones that will probably be causing you the worst leaks. Okay. And of course, then, out of the shuttle, you can see in the back side that the, the nose of the port side shuttle is gone. <laughs> Shite. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Shite, indeed. Hmm. Do I know offhand if we have any welding equipment? If that would help? You do not know offhand. You may have to ask. Um, thinking that my my buttons, I have to click it to talk. She doesn't realize it's stuck on. She clicks it and it makes like an annoying sound. Lux, do you know if we have welding equipment? We should have repair equipment on board. How bad is the damage? Uh, two major leaks. Um, center and um, I'm not Port. sure what 10 would be called. The right terminology for it. <laughs> starboard. Is that starboard? Right okay. is starboard, left is port. Okay. Um, center, starboard. 
Um, and then she'll she'll tell you about the uh, engines. I have another ship stuck in engine. Is that engine four? Uh, engine three is has an, oh. <laughs> half a ship stuck in it. Do you want me to grab it out and push it? Not quite yet. We may be able to salvage it for um, parts. Good call. Basically patching the ship. Okay, good idea. Um, and Ares will get a extra 50 experience points bonus for using a Star Wars quote in... <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Awesome, uh, Ares. All right, awesome. we'll go get this repair kit. And she'll go back in and retrieve it. Yeah, I'm going to come help you. Cool. All righty, so... Off to the creepy room we go. <laughs> All right, so Lunafia and Pixis, the two of you are in the room with the ground fog. You have slow moving, swirling eddies from your wings. Pixis walks in just after you have seen something apparently pass in front of a, one of the lights underneath the grates. I'm going to ask Pixis if she can do a computer check to try to figure out if there's anything in the logs as to what was in this room. That's up to Pixis. Let's see. Well, I was thinking of doing a perception check and seeing like the surroundings, maybe... What's going okay. on? Yep, you can go ahead and do a perception check as well. I'm trying to find where everything is, sorry. Not problem. It's on your skills tab. Alrighty, so you start looking, poking your head around the room a little bit, and you can see, you know, once again, same thing like I had described earlier to Luna Fia, you know, the, the swirling ground mist and the, and the blue light. You even get to see a different light kind of wink off and wink back on real quickly as if something passed in front of it over on a different part of the room than Luna Fia had just seen. And you can also hear that constant hissing noise. I guess I said, it sounds like there's something in here. Um, I think you're right. There's something. I'll check the logs. Okay. If you have computers, go ahead and get me a computer check. If you don't, then it'll be an intelligence check. don't think I have the computers check, but intelligence on my abilities then? Yep. You can't pull up the logs of what is actually supposed to be in here. I don't know what's in here. Um, Maybe we should try and quickly get out and close the door before it follows us. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. We're going to retreat. <laughs> and you bravely run away. <laughs> okay, you exit. Door closes. I'm going to ask still Locke again. Hear the, you can still hear the hiss. I'm going to ask Lox again if she knows of anything that was supposed to be in this room. Because whatever it is, it's not where it should be. Let me do a quick log check. Logs say nothing is supposed to be in that room. Well, then we've got another problem on our hands because something was in there and it's free. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it was more some things than something. It's uh maybe a couple of songs in there. My guess is there could probably up to six of whatever unknown thing in there. Um, somebody might have been trying to sneak something over to the prison. Mm, contraband. Would explain why we were attacked. Mm, that's a good point. Meanwhile, Lox, what else would you like to do while you're sitting up front? All right. Well, I've done as much as I can right now with life support. We're mostly stable-ish. I'm going to go help Ares with patching up these holes. Okay. All right, so, okay, technically Ares is outside. So Ares is on her way back when she sees the outer doors close <laughs> <laughs> as locks. Basically starts going through the cycle to repressurize the the area. Locks is outside the door. So she passes by Pixis and, Ra and uh, Lunafia over here. Meanwhile, Raviella and Echo are getting crates and putting them in front of the, the semi-open door. I'll go back to Lunafia and Pixis for a minute. What would you two ladies like to do? As you see, locks go running down the hallway. <laughs> She got dressed fast. No, she's running for her EVA suit. I was going to say, like, the, man. Uh, I was like, I need help. <laughs> she's She doesn't take care of herself well. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Not dressed yet, I wish. <laughs> Do you need help getting dressed? <laughs> I might. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> not only is this a prison movie it's a space prison movie so okay we've just gone into the realm of sci-fi B movie sci-fi <laughs> late night cinemax B movie sci-fi <laughs> some of those are awesome okay <laughs> you're right they are very entertaining I, I agree <laughs> Nympho Vampires from Outer Space was probably one of my favorites. It's being movie sci-fi. It's so it's cheap, easy. Awesome. Yay. Or Jasmine. Or Jasmine.